just a lonely cave girl searching for a mate, looking for cave romance or at least a cave mandate. My mama says I must wait here until the moon is bright with cakes, milk, and honey as gifts for the gods. With snack food for Mr. Wright. Now crawl around three times on your hands and knees, and if the face of a handsome man comes into view, then he's your caveman. I think I must look really silly. What caveman in his right mind would go for a crawling, circling cave girl like? Oh, are you the man for me? Caveman love. My handsome caveman husband is all I'd hoped he would be. He likes to go out hunting, then I cook it for his tea. I promise to love him forever until he's old and gray. He'll live to the grand age of thirty, at which point he'll probably pass away. Oh, but that doesn't mean you stop loving him, 'cause now you have to prepare a burial. To show how much you care for your caveman love. First, I set fire to my husband, then carefully cut off his skin, then boil in a pot some oysters and snakes. Let the funeral begin. Drop in some limpets, some winkles, and sprinkles of mouse. My caveman love. Don't. My caveman love. Don't. My caveman love. Mark Anthony has accepted me as a friend on Mummy Bow. Excellent. Thanks. For the ad, smiley hieroglyphic. <gasps> It's him. Hail Queen Cleopatra. Hail yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at your mummy bow profile, and I couldn't help but notice you haven't got many friends. Yeah, well, I did have my sister, Pharaoh Cleopatra the Sixth, but she died in suspicious circumstances, and my other sister, Pharaoh Berenice the Fourth, but. She was executed. Then there were my half brothers, Pharaoh Ptolemy the Thirteenth, drowned, and Pharaoh Ptolemy the Fourteenth, poisoned. Sounds like being on the throne in Egypt is a pretty dangerous job, Cleo. Do you never get scared? <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I'll be fine. I just need a powerful Roman to stand alongside me. Oh, what, like Caesar? Didn't you date him? Yeah. <laughs> Now he's dead. Yeah. Uh, about that, there's now a vacancy. So, do you want to go out with me? No. Oh, please, 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 please! I'll put you on my top ten friends list. Okay. In for a denarius, in for a sestertius. <laughs> More like a top two friends list. Who's this other one? Oh yeah, that's my sister Arsino. At last, a member of your family who isn't dead. Hmm. About that. Cleo. Yeah, the thing is, she's the last threat to my throne, so I need to have Arsino killed. You don't mind if I put your name on the assassination warrant, do you?、Um, please, 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 please. Oh, okay. There we go. Nasty business, but had to be done. Now you and me can rule the Egyptian Empire in peace. Right, great. Oh, oh, what was that noise? Did something go wrong? Oh.、Uh, Yeah, it says there's a problem with the transaction. I probably just need to update my Papyrus Pal account. Oh. What? What is it? Yeah. Turns out Arsino was on the steps of a sacred temple when you murdered her. When I murdered her. Rome is up in arms. We're in big trouble. What are we going to do? Well, if we want to die with dignity, we'll have to kill ourselves before the Roman army get to us. What? Oh, this is most inconvenient. Oh well, I suppose. No, 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 wait. I, I suppose we could pretend to kill ourselves and then just hide. Oh, oh! Now you tell me, Cleo. You are literally the worst girlfriend I've ever had, and I've had some shockers. 
Looks like I'll have to do the same then. Uh, I'll get a poisonous snake to bite me. I mean, that's quite a regal way to go. An asp? Perfect. <laughs> How much? 20 bronze coins for packaging. Well, I suppose it is quite a long tube. Ancient Sparta, and the king has news for his daughter, Helen of Troy. Daughter. It is time to choose a husband from all the kings and princes of Greece. Yeah, whatever, I'll have that one. Menelaus of Sparta is chosen. Sweet as a nut, mate! Yes! Helen and Menelaus were married the next week. Helen, you was well fit. Your face could launch a thousand ships, yeah? What, what is that supposed to mean? I think I've married an idiot. But then, another suitor turned up. Sorry I'm late, yeah? I'm Paris, Prince of Troy. I'm here for the husband choosing. Mate, you was too late, yeah? This ship has already sailed and it's mine. Captain Menelaus. Wow, that Paris, he is well fit. Menelaus won't mind if I run away to Troy with Paris. He'll forget about me in like new time. But Menelaus didn't forget about Helen. Listen up, yeah? I want all us Greek soldiers to march on Troy, you get me? We're gonna tear that city up! Kill them all, is it? Yeah, it is. Meanwhile, in Troy... Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, started a war. Menelaus has brought a huge army to take you back to Greece, yeah? He's surrounded Troy. We is going to war! <laughs> you boys, honestly. <laughs> the war lasts for ten long years. Oh, bored now. Oh. Helen, I got well bad news. Paris is dead. Which one's he again? My brother, the prince. That bloke you ran off with, you know, the reason for this whole ten-year war. Oh, yeah, I remember. All Helen has to do to end the war and save hundreds of thousands of lives is go back to her husband, Menelaus. What will she do? Ooh, who's well fit? Do you fancy getting married? Yeah, if you like. My name's Deophobus, by the way. Whatever. Friends call me Phoebe. Don't really care. It was to be a short marriage. All right, Menelaus. What is up, boo? I destroyed Troy. Paris is dead. Deus. Deus. That one is dead as well. And it's all because of you, girl. What's you've got to say for yourself? Ah. Oh. oh, you're really fit when you're angry. Do you fancy getting back together again? Yeah. What am I like? <laughs> Alan is a Middle Ages man from England. He's met Scottish beauty Doilag and wants to marry her. So they've travelled back to Scotland to meet Doilag's devoted mother and father. But what will they think of him? Oh. This is Alan. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh. Oh. I don't think they like me. No, no. We're just throwing herring fat at a wall to see if you're an honest man or no. That's how we like to do things in medieval Scotland. Aye, the herring fat runs straight, Father. Is that, is that a good thing? Aye, if it were crooked, that would mean you were dishonest. Oh. Now, allow me to wash your feet in a mixture of oil, soot and cinders. This will bring you luck for your marriage. It's how we like to do things in medieval Scotland. Oh. Uh. It's the morning of the wedding and Alan's beginning to have some doubts. Listen, Doilag. Look, all these weird Scottish customs have got me thinking. You don't think we're rushing into things, do you? Oh! Hey, hey, ready for a creeling. Oh, what's a creeling? Oh, it's just a taste to see if you're man enough to be my husband. All you have to do is carry this basket of stones around the village. Off you go. It's okay. Oh, you'll be all right. Hey, uh, it's how we like to do things in medieval Scotland. 
you go all the way around the village. Yes. Aye, he's still an honest man. He's telling the truth. <laughs> Let's get to the church. Coming up in the next series of My Big Fat Medieval Scottish Wedding, Doylag and Alan's baby is christened. Aye, it's how we like to do things in medieval Scotland. Hello, historical dates. Call us with spade if it's a partner you need. I'm sorry you had a terrible date with Alexander the Great. Perhaps you'll have a great one with Arvin the Terrible. Maybe you should go out of him. Oh, no, I've had enough, Karen. I'm not dating any more men. Least of all these historical ones. Oh, hello. I like him. What can I do for you? I am looking for a woman. Bing! She must be good at fighting. Well, you should see me on a Saturday night. And she must be able to manage the farm whilst I am away on Viking raids. Well, I love animals, I do. <laughs> Embarrassing. Well, in that case, what are you doing tonight? What? Wait till my mum is. I'm going out with a Viking. No, you must not tell your mum. If you tell your mum, I must marry you. What? A Viking who takes too long to propose to a woman can be physically harmed by this woman's family. Hello, mum. I'm going on a date with a Viking. I've got to go. I've got a wedding to organise. Hey, you hardly know him. Now, how much will your father want for you? Sorry? We Vikings always pay for the bride. Sally's as cheap as chips. For two bags of chips, you could probs marry Sally and her sister. All right. Nice deal. Right, I must go and fetch the goat. Yeah. To sacrifice, so that we can drip its blood over us. Lovely. And then we will eat, drink and wrestle. Sounds like your cousin's wedding, Sal. And then we will hurl insults at each other. You cut price Saxon bride from hell, you oh, stupid okay, face. Okay, no, I'm going to stop you there. I don't want to marry you. I just think it's moving a bit too fast. OK. Listen, since I'm here, do you mind if I do a bit of pillaging? Oh, no, not at all. Help yourself. Doing anything nice at the weekend, Karen? Well, I now pronounce you Emperor and Wife. Emperor Nero, you may kiss the bride. You lucky, lucky thing. He was the man who had everything. Land. Love you. Power. Tell me. Grapes. A lot of grapes. And the woman of his dreams. I love you, darling. I don't blame you. Then, one day, possibly while shopping for grapes... I'm not paying for these. My empire, my rules. Nero met the woman of his dreams. Yes, another one. Who is that? Do you want to go out with me? Won't your wife mind? Shouldn't think so. Do you mind? Yes, I mind. Hmm. You can never second-guess these things. But Nero was prepared to do anything to be with the woman he loved. No, no, the other one. Yeah, yeah, that one, there. I need a sign! Something to show that you love me now, not her! Right, well, something more than grapes, because I've got loads of grapes. There's something more than grapes? Right. This summer, one emperor will prove that love is a gift. Darling, it's just what I wanted. Your wife's severed head in a basket. Coming soon, the film that puts the Roman in romantic comedy. You would never cut off my head and put it in a basket, would you? Baby, of course not. <gasps> I'm gonna have you kicked to death. What? Shh, nothing. Love you to death. Based on a true story, rated unreasonable. He was the vicious, arrogant Norman Duke who would one day rule England. Oh, really? Good. I like England. Apart from the weather. Oh, and the food. And the people. <laughs> she was the beautiful granddaughter of the French king. Grandpapa, can I have a pony? Yes, have a hundred ponies. I love you, Grandpapa. And when William asked for her hand in marriage, there was only ever going to be one answer. No way. I'm way too posh for that stinky Duke William. I'm gonna marry like a prince or something. But William wouldn't take no for an answer. He set off on a journey to win the heart of the beautiful princess. Stand up. I am standing up. Well, you're very small. Yeah, I'm like four foot. 
What do you want? I want you to marry me. I will never marry you. We'll see about that. Duke William used all his charm to make Matilda fall in love with him. Marry me. No! Marry me. No! Marry me. Okay! Great! Hey, whoa, 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 now hang on a minute. What was all that about? All what? All that! You pulling her hair and pushing her in the mud and stuff. Well, it's just what happened. She said no, so I pulled her hair and then I pushed her in the mud and... But you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was terrible. But actually, he turned out to be a really good husband. Yeah, we were together 30 years. We had 11 beautiful children. Yeah, but it's kind of... But I... Yeah, yeah. What? Ah, forget it. So where were we? Coming soon to a cinema near you, Mud and Matilda. A tale of loving and shoving. Oi! I already said yes! Oh, sorry. My bad. You look beautiful. Thank you. Who are you? Oh, sorry. I am the Duke de Chavous. I'm going to marry you today. Enchanté? What? Where is King Charles I? I'm supposed to marry him. Not you. You could do worse. I'm a duke. He's a king. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose he is. Anyway, he said to say he's uh, very sorry, but he's a bit busy, so would you mind if I sort of stood in for him for the whole wedding scene? Stood in? Yeah, well, you know, it's a bit difficult for him. Uh, There's this whole tricky business with religion. Uh, you're Catholic, he's not. Uh, plus, of course, you're in France, he's not. So in the end, I just thought it might be easier to pop down and sort of get married for him. Does he not want to marry me then? Oh, no, 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 no. He's got his whole second wedding plan when you get to England next month. Yeah, a big church in Canterbury, a nice Protestant ceremony, big silly cake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Magnifique. Ready when you are. Do you, Henrietta Maria, take a man who is not here but somehow knows this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. And does uh, King Charles I take this woman to be his lawfully wedded wife? Yeah, apparently it does. Then I now pronounce you friend of the husband and somebody else's wife. You may kiss the other fellow's bride. How dare you? I'm the wife of King Charles I. I think, sort of. I'm so sorry, I always cry at weddings. <laughs> Yes, I'm still a handsome devil. Yeah. Oh, what's this? Could it be that my dear wife Catherine has given birth? Oh, she has. Please be a boy. Please be a boy. Please be a boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why has God forsaken me with only lady babies? No. I must have a male heir. A queen on the English throne would be disastrous. I mean, girls are too silly to rule countries. It's all my wife's fault. I'm going to divorce her. No, worse. I'm going to drop her from my top eight on Yibo, and then I'm going to divorce her. <laughs> yes, see how she likes that. There we go. Take that. Oh, no. Let's put the King of France in my top eight. And he's an idiot. Right. I'm going to have to completely rearrange my friends list now. The Pope. What does he want? Ah, yeah. oh, Your Holiness. Hello to you. Uh, I thought you were languishing in a rat-infested Spanish dungeon. <laughs> I am, but it has uh, excellent Wi-Fi coverage. Yeah. Henry, is it true? You dropped the Queen from your top eight on Yibo? Yes, it's true. She bore me the wrong kind of baby. I specifically asked for a boy. So I'd like to divorce her, if that's okay with you. What? No! No, absolutely not! Well, it's too late. I'm looking on TudorBrides.com as we speak. But Henry, uh, now listen to me. Here's one. Anne Boleyn, Protestant lady, seeks rich, ennobled husband for good times and lots of male heirs, likes beards. Well, I must marry her right away. <laughs> Henry, the Catholic Church unremittingly refuses your request for a divorce. Oh, really? Well, 
I'm just going to set up my own church if I'm going to be like that. What are you talking about? You can't set up your own church. You need scriptures and a dogma. <laughs> that is <sighs> so 1529. You can do it all online now. Uh, yep, there we go. <laughs> uh, church of Henry. Yes, that's it. Oh, it's gone. No. Henry, I implore you, please, think of the think of the implications, the damage it will cause, Henry. Church of England? Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Henry, please, listen to me. I'm the Pope! Henry! Henry! Sorry, Your Holiness. I'm the Pope. Gotta go. Email just popped in. It might be from Anne Boleyn. Uh, see you later. Uh, uh, what does this idiot want? King of France, indeed. Is it... Oh, he sent me a virus. Very clever. Well done. Ah, uh, idiot. Divorce beheaded and died. Divorce beheaded survived. I'm Henry VIII. I had six sorry wives. Some might say I ruined their lives. Catherine of Aragon was one. She failed to give me a son. I had to ask her for a divorce. That broke up her heart, of course. Young Anne Boleyn, she was two. Had a daughter the best she could do. I said she flirted with some other man and off with the chop went dear Anne. Lovely Jane Seymour was three. The love of a lifetime for me. She gave me a son, little Prince Ed. Then poor old Jane went and dropped dead. Divorced, beheaded and died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives. Some might say I ruined their lives. Anne of Cleves came at four. I fell for the portrait I saw. Then laid eyes on her face and cried, she's a horse. I must have another divorce. Catherine Howard was five. A child of 19, so alive. She flirted with others, no way to behave. The axe sent young Kath to her grave. Catherine Parr, she was last. By then all my best days were past. I lay on my deathbed, age just 55. Lucky Catherine, the last, stayed alive. I mean, how unfair. Ah! Divorced, beheaded and died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. I'm Henry VIII, I had six sorry wives. You could say I ruined their lives. <laughs> oh, another smallpox scar. Just what I need when I'm looking for a suitor. Oh, Cecil, my loyal advisor. What does he want? Your Majesty, I bring tragic news. You should check your emails. Amy Dudley, wife of Robert Dudley, has been found dead at the bottom of her stairs. Oh, oh, oh that is absolutely... Oh, awful, awful news. This isn't anything to do with Your Majesty, is it? It's just I know that you are rather fond of Robert. I don't know what you are talking about, Cecil. Just as well. Dudley is not good enough for Your Majesty. If the Tudor line is to continue, Your Majesty is simply going to have to keep looking for a husband. Oh, you're right, Cecil, as usual. Right, let's see if there have been any views of my online dating profile. I have rejected a few, haven't I? Indeed, Mum. He got mail. Oh, oh, yippee! <laughs> I I've got to go, Seth. Lots of love. For dear, no. Your Majesty, did you get my email? I've built you a garden at Kenilworth. Yes, Robert, I, I love it. It's perfect. I'm so pleased. Although, it is a little far to the left. Could you move it over a bit? Uh, you want me to move the entire garden? Ah, I only want you to move it by a few feet. I'm hardly being unreasonable. Of course not. Hmm, it's such a shame Cecil says I can't marry Robert. He's such a sweetie. Right, who have we got? No, no, too French. Sir Francis Drake. Oh, no, 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 that goatee. Police, it's so 1558. It must be somebody. Oh, Walter Raleigh. Walter, 
Your Majesty, I do hope I'm not disturbing you. No, I always have time for an eligible bachelor, such as your handsome self. <laughs> well, funny you should say that, because I was just calling to inform Your Majesty of my intentions to marry Bess Throckmorton. What? Sling your hope, you're blocking my line. Maybe Dudley will just have to do this. What? Again? To who? Let his nollies. Ugh. What on earth would have led Robert to develop a taste for lettuce? <laughs> Any luck securing the Tudor lineage, Your Majesty? No, Cecil, and I'm just about ready to give up. Hang on. Robert Devereux. Aha! I might have spoken too soon. The Earl of Essex. And he's just emailed me. <laughs> oh, that's excellent news. <gasps> Wait a minute. This email is about a rebellion. He's planning to overthrow me, Cecil. And the fool has cc'd me in by accident. Off with his head. Let's not be too hasty. You must find a husband or the Tudor lineage is finished. The truth is, I am already married. Really, Your Majesty? To whom? To England. Well said, ma'am. And with that, I bid you adieu. <clears throat> yeah, she's really lost it. You're through to historical dates. Perfect matches, reasonable rates. Yes, sir, I'm sure we can help you find a new wife. Have you been married before? Oh, twice. No, that won't be a problem, sir. As long as you didn't murder him. <laughs> you did. Right, yes, that will be a problem. OK. Bye, Emperor Nero. You'd have to be totes desperate to go out with that one. Should have given him your number. Oh, shut up, Karen. I'm not desperate. Shut up. You so are. There you are, Your Majesty. Horrible. What's your name? James Hamilton, second Earl of Allen. I seek a suitable marriage partner. I'm sure we'll have no trouble finding you a wife. Oh, it's not for me. It's for the baby. She's my cousin, Mary, Queen of Scots. Her daddy was James V of Scotland, but uh, he died when she was just six days old. That's awful. You're telling me. I was heir to the throne until this wee one came along. All of a sudden, she's Queen of Scotland, only I have to run the country while she's too busy trying to suck her own toes. Oh, what a clever little queen, eh? Mm. You don't think she's a bit young to be looking for a long-term partner? Well, she's been engaged for six months. Engaged? Aye, to Edward. And how old is he? Six. He's six years old. I'll admit there's a bit of an age gap, but they've so much in common, what with Mary being Queen of Scotland and Edward being heir to the English throne. Well, they do sound well matched. Where did they meet, then, on a royal play date? No, we're at war with the English. That is not such a promising start to a relationship. Well, we thought it'd be nice to get the two wee bands together, but uh, the people of Scotland were no happy, so we called the whole thing off. What's Edward going to say? Well, if he's six years old, I expect he'll mainly talk about bogeys. I'm more worried about what his father's going to say. Right! Where is she? Why did you call off the engagement to Edward? He's a catch, just like his father. <laughs> I'm Henry, by the way. <laughs> so, is this marriage back on? No? We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Please say the hard way. I'm sorry, Henry. The people of Scotland will never accept an English king. Yes! War it is. I'm going to raise Edinburgh to the ground, just to see if I don't. Who am I? Well, it smells like someone needs changing, and I don't think it's the baby. <gasps> well, I just left the pheasant where it was and shot Mr Harrington instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr Darbley, I've never known such a great wit. Oh, you're too kind. Well, this looks as good a spot as any. Oh, yes, it's, it's perfect. I must say, Miss Pennywhistle, you really are the most pleasant of company. <laughs> Charming of character, bright of mind, and with as pretty a smile as I have ever... I've never known such rudeness. What the...? Sitting next to a lady in the countryside is entirely improper. The very height of Victorian rudeness. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perhaps this humble sandwich would serve by way of an apology. Perhaps. What, pray tell, is in the sandwich? Cheese and onion. Rudeness that cannot be counted on one's fingers or measured in one's heart. What now? Cheese and onion, Mr. Dublin. There is nothing more rude in polite Victorian society than for a man to smell of onion. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, happily, there are plenty of non-onion-based delights within the hamper. I'll just attend to this slight nosebleed you appear to have caused, and I'll... Oh, wow. Rudeness beyond human comprehension. Come on. 
Blowing your nose in public is the very height of bad manners. As it would seem are most things, Miss Pennywhistle. May I ask where polite Victorian society stands on apple pie? Apple pie? Is it considered discourteous, offensive, or uncultured? Well, no. Is it rude, ill-mannered, improper, or indiscreet? I, I don't believe so, no. So just to clarify, you have no objection whatsoever to apple pie? No, of course not. Good. And just be thankful I forgot the cream. Well, he's the rudest man I've ever met. But he sure can bake. Victoria and Albert, the love story of their generation. 1836, and the most eligible young princess in the world meets her potential suitors. What about Alexandra of Netherlands, Prince of Orange Nassau? Three out of ten. Begging your pardon, Mum, but he's totally fit. Don't care. Not interested. It was not going well. Until... Prince Albert of saxe coburg Who is that? He's Gorge. Twelve out of ten. Sorry, Highness, who are we looking at? Is he behind the one with the ridiculous facial hair? Oi! Walrus face! Out of the way! Thus, he spoke. For Princess Victoria, it was love at first sight. All right. I think you're the fittest man I've ever seen. I love you. I just wish I knew if she liked me. It was a royal whirlwind romance, and after a couple of years, it was time to propose. My love, my darling, my cousin. There is something I need to ask you. Will you marry me? Oh. That is what I was going to say, but, uh, yes, why not? 10th of February, 1840, the happy day. Prince Albert marries the now Queen Victoria. I now pronounce you queen and husband. Check it out, King Albert. Or was he? Oh, no, it's Prince Albert, actually. But I have married a queen, so I am king. Yes, but it doesn't work like that. Maybe it does. No, it doesn't, though. Maybe it could, so. No, it couldn't, though. But you're queen. You could make me king if you like. Yes, you'd think, but I asked the government and they said no. OK, baby. It was a happy marriage, a really happy marriage, that would bring them nine children and that would last until their dying day, which, sadly, in the case of Prince Albert, wasn't very long. Queen Victoria went into mourning. Time is a great healer. Forty years later... Oh, come on, get over it. Finally, after four decades of grieving, Victoria was ready to move on. OK, I'm over it. I'm ready to start dating again. I think you might have left that a little late.
Just fear, no air, no air, just fear. Oh, how I mourned my special pal. I loved you, Vic. I loved you.